Okay, let's have a look at game three. So, top lob with white kicks off with d4. We have the very popular Slav defense instead of the Groomfield. So, Annan trying to play quite solidly in this game, maybe being content for a hard fought draw. Knight f3, knight f6, standard stuff. Knight c3, white's temporarily gambiting the c pawn. After d takes c4, he plays now the move a4, so this tries to prevent black from maintaining that pawn with b5. Interestingly, um, I think this is much better now how Toplov played the, than I played against Simon Ansel in, in the London Classic. Instead of e3, I think that's a bit passive. It leaves the bishop kind of good and this bishop kind of trapped in. Instead, it's nice to be able to blunt this bishop. If it's going to go to g6 anyway, to have a pawn chain with a pawn on f3 and e4, so Toplov engineers this with his next move. Knight e5 means the f pawn can now move and have this pawn sense with f3 and e4. So this bishop's like put out of the game. As a downside to this, though, black can undermine now this d4 pawn because this knight's moved off, off protecting d4. So it makes c5 a bit more effective for black. So f3, c5. Now we have here e4. So you may be wondering, well, can actually, you know, black just take this pawn? That would fail miserably because it takes, well, let's have a quick look. Takes, and now just queen takes d8, I believe, and then knight takes f7. So that's the tactical reason why white can get away with this. So he's blunting out that bishop now. The bishop moves back. And now white and then protects that d4 pawn. So white's slightly better, but it's, it's nothing really to write home with. And after queen takes d4, and it's probably glad to get the queens off. It means, um, you know, it's less likely of a major disaster later, like that game one. So queen takes d4, bishop takes d4. And I know the spectators are not enthralled by this, the queen's coming off, but, you know, this is solid chess from, from an and. He's still got some positional problems to solve and tactical problems like g7. And he's quite ingenious in how he solves it with um, non-routine looking moves now. So Topolov takes on d7. He's got a bit of pressure. So how does Anand resolve it? Well, um, after bishop takes c4, he first plays a6 to deprive white of the b5 square. That might be kind of dangerous. But it is it is very a careful move as well, carefully calculated positional risk. Because now white can, in theory, try and strengthen you know the control of the dark squares later with moves like a5 and knight a4. Actually, which which did kind of occur. So these dark squares are compromised. But see, the the problem is this b5 square could actually be really dangerous. You know, say castles queenside and bishop b5. You know, d7 would be pinned. So Anand's you know making concession there with a6. And then after this this strange looking rook move. I I, I was um, following the game live actually at chess games com, and. Chess games come on to have um, Nigel Short come to and he, he was questioning, you know, what's what's the rook doing here? And I was checking with, with Rivka, and there's some very fascinating um, lines that came up later. So maybe this this move is is kind of Rivka preparation. You know, it's it's less routine than say casting, or or even King F2. You know, Bishop C5. So maybe you know it's one of the best waiting moves in its own right. But it has some venomous tactical ideas, I think underneath the surface. And then in this position, he wants to be able to move this bishop on f8. Um, and he wants his king in safety and he wants to complete development and connect his rooks for a change. That would be a novel change. But um, first he must still solve this pressure which is which is being exerted at the moment. So I like this next move. He plays rook g8. Okay, so he's investing one move, more move, but how can he be broken by Toplov? Toplov has, has no crushing, thematic pawn structure blows here to use. He can, however, threaten to sort of trap this bishop a bit more. But even this, you know, this bishop's not really trapped on g6. You know, if, if black, as he does, plays later h6, the bishop can go there, and then later maybe even to g8, and then maybe f6 and e5 even, in the, in the distant future. So h6 has perhaps that idea in mind. Or, alternatively, you know, if this bishop wasn't eyeing e6, f5 later would strike at white center. So there's still options for that bishop. It's not as bad as all that. 
on g6. So king e2. So that's, um, you know, keeping the king in the center in this position is probably a bit more effective than simply just castling. Okay, so bishop d6. And now we see this bishop chase back to h7. Right, and now we see a very interesting move, which which some commentators were, were really confused by, uh, in Kibitz's, um because well, ev even at the time, I, f I just thought Bishop B4, and you know, what is, what is that point? Is it a weakness or something? But here's here's the tactical uh, logic, uh, which which lie beneath the surface. If if Bishop B4, I think this does set up quite a vicious trap in Knight B5. For example, a takes, bishop takes. And now look at that rook. It's ready to come down to c7. So if rook takes a5, then rook c8. Um, and that's um, kind of getting dire. Actually, let's just check this. Rook takes a5. Actually, I'm not really sure. No, the bishop is actually protecting the rook on g8. But there was some some tactical reason there, and someone posted this technical line. P please post it to the comments of of this video. But the more the more fascinating one for me was actually Bishop takes a5, um, and Ripka's giving I think this position as crushing Bishop c5 here, so it's stopping the Black King from escaping, and there's going to be Rook d1 next, and uh, you know this is tactically um, a potential disaster. For black, if rook d8, I think there's just rook d1. I think this is the position. I'm hesitant to turn on Ripka to check. I think I will. Let's check this position. Or it might be earlier. Maybe just, we'll, we'll just check here. Well, here, here it, it is dangerous. But was is that so after bishop c5 so say rook not rook d8 but say rook c8 right rook h d1 bishop c6 sorry rook c6 